Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we are lucky to be in this beautiful control room of Black Kiss Records studio in Warsaw, Poland, which I happen to work for. These huge monitors you can see behind me, this is our newest purchase. A pair of British ETC SCM 300s, absolutely top-notch reference monitors, but these guys are not the main character of today's story. Ion8, because that's what we will be talking about today, is a brand new product from Kali Audio, a company which, although founded only two years ago, already managed to gain reputation for manufacturing monitors unrivaled in their price range. I, by the way, made a conclusion myself after testing the LP8 model that this is literally the cheapest thing in the market that deserves being called a true studio monitor. So, if Kali decided to raise the bar and build a three-way speaker, which is what Ion8 actually are, I decided to raise it even higher and place them right next to a pair of speakers, costing almost a hundred times more. What's the outcome? Let's find out. For this comparison, to be fair, I decided to divide it into two episodes. In the first part, we're going to do measurements comparing these two pairs of monitors. The SCM300 is one of the most renowned monitors in the world, so it would be hard to find any better reference for this kind of measurements. The second part will be done in a much smaller room and direct comparison to Adam S3As, which are much more of a competition for INAs regarding size and price tag. Why so? Well, according to the specification, the recommended listening distance between ion 8 and the sweet spot is 2.8 meters, which makes them a midfield monitor. Despite that, I'm more than sure that because of its size and the price, uh, there is a huge amount of people with smaller rooms which consider ion 8 as a serious option for them. That's why I decided to give them a shot in my production room as well. That doesn't of course mean I won't be comparing directly ion 8 to SCM300 sound-wise, but I don't think it's gonna be a fair comparison, but I might be surprised as well. But first let's take a look at some technical details. The ION8 has a triumph plate amplifier, that means uh, it has a separate power amplifier for each speaker and an active crossover. The latter one is handled by a built-in DSP, which also allows some tonal balance control to match the sound of your speakers to your room or your preference. All of DSP adjustments are made using tip switches at the back of the amplifier plate. What might be important for some budget users, the amplifiers are equipped with both balanced and unbalanced input connectors. Okay, we are just preparing to compare these two monitors, these guys, the ATC SCM300 with the IN8s. My friend is with us, Michal Jantar. Hello? Hello? He'll be doing all the measurements and let's see what comes out. Wow, it made a sweat, but the rig is almost ready. Michal makes some final adjustments to his setup, and we'll be starting too. Calibrating the levels now. Okay, we are done at the sweet spot. Now we'll be measuring both sets from one meter. Okay, one more thing. Right now we'll be measuring the background noise level, LAEQ, uh, to deal with a complaint I heard of that ion8s generate a lot of self-noise. So right now we're gonna check the background noise level with the ion8s off and then with ion8s on to see if that can actually be a problem. Measurements in progress. 
Okay, we're done with the measurements. Check out the link in the description for the results. And now let me share a few thoughts of comment about the self noise. Okay, I admit, it was also my complaint about the uh, two way LP8 model that in the near field, the self noise of these monitors was actually a problem. We've measured the background noise of this room, which is, by the way, quite impressive 33.1 dBA. This is an awesome noise rating for a control room, especially concerning that the speaker was measured with this PC here and on. Next we measured the same background noise with the IN8s on, the difference was negligible. One tenth of a decibel, it's it's below the threshold of measurements error. What does it mean? Uh, using IN8 as a midfield monitor and measuring the noise rating here at the sweet spot revealed that the self-noise of these speakers is too low to be even noticed. Please note that this applies only to the midfield applications. What about near field? Check out the second part of this video. We've also measured the total harmonical distortion for both sets. And we are quite surprised with the results. Both pairs performed surprisingly well. When it comes to ATC, what we've measured was actually what we could read out of the manual. But when it comes to Kali, our results were significantly better than the specifications the manufacturer declares. Next on, the face response. Surprisingly similar in both cases. But as you probably may notice, the ionates have one flip less than the the ATCs. Why is it so? This one is simple. First of all, ion eights are significantly smaller, so the distance between particular speakers and their acoustic centers inside the cabinet is significantly shorter, especially when it comes to the distance between sound source and your listening position. Second of all, the mid and high frequency drivers in Kali Audio are built in a coaxial configuration, and that gives them the advantage of more coherence in high and mid-frequency range. However, what's worth mentioning at this point is what my friend Micho says. You can't actually hear face response. I know it might sound like a controversial statement, but in this situation, when we are not connecting multiple cabinets together to perform as one system, as in, for example, line arrays, the face response of a single monitor is not that much of a concern. Last but not least, the frequency response. Of course, the ATCs win uh, at all fronts. We have full linearity from the 50 Hz up to 16K, plus minus 2 decibels, it no surprise at this price point. What about Kali? First thing we noticed from both the measurements and the listening test is the bottom end. Suddenly, it comes out that a single 8-inch woofer provides more bass than a double 15. How come? It's not that ATCs lack low end. It's that Kali audio has too much. But are these information useful? You can easily see that on the measurements. First, you have a 6 dB boost from 40 Hz to 90 Hz, then you have a slight cut on the 90 Hz and then again a 6 dB boost which ends around 280 Hz or so. Is that okay for a studio monitor? I wouldn't say so, but these informations ionates provide in the low end are still quite useful. That might not be the most precise low end I've ever heard. That might even be a bit too muddy, a bit too slow for my preference, especially when compared to ATCs. But it still is quite useful and revealing. We also have to remember that there are a lot of tweaks you can do with the built-in DSP processor. The average measurement was done with the DSP on and set for this room, while the FFT was performed with the DSP off. There is also a choice of software on the market that can be used to calibrate monitor systems. One of the most popular among such programs is the Reference 4 by Sonarworks. I used the measuring model from this program to measure the average frequency response of both sets. It takes an average from 40 measurements for each speaker. Then it lets you generate a dedicated calibration profile to compensate the characteristics of your room and your monitors. So we have a lot of tools to compensate these bumps in frequency response, but generally as a starting point, the IN8 is very, very good, not to say great. A three-way monitor with 8-inch woofer and such impressive specs at this price point, that doesn't happen very often. 
Just to her disclaimer, all the FFT face and THD measurements were done using Smart Life 8. The average frequency response was measured using SonarWorks reference for measuring module. Great thanks for ESS Audio, the Polish Kali audio dealer, for providing IN8 and WS12 subwoofer, which will be the hero of my next test. Just a spoiler. Great thanks for the studio owner, Arek, for the possibility to run this test here and use these big guys for our comparison. Thank you all for watching and feel free to subscribe and comment and see you in the second part.